Paul Paul, the Pyramid Project Delivery Director, was walking around the complex when he happened upon Dan, the manager in charge of roofs, ceilings and load spread, and said, What's up, buddy? You look worried. Worried is an understatement, replied Dan. I've just been down to Aswan to see how the granite ceiling beams are getting on. They haven't completed one yet, and I'm supposed to start installing the corridor ceiling beams in two weeks. We'll be months and months behind schedule. Paul immediately went down to Aswan to see the problem for himself. There he met the quarry manager, Colin, who explained that the granite was immensely harder to cut than the traditional limestone. Colin took Paul down to the quarry, where they watched six men working in rotation using a long, two-handled copper saw to cut the stone. A large team of about 12 workers were working nearby, constantly re-sharpening the copper saws, so there could be a replacement saw available as soon as the one in use went blunt, which it did very quickly. The rest of the workers were melting down old saws, which were beyond repair and recasting new ones. Working beside the wood-fired furnaces was extremely hot and trying work. After studying the team's work frantically all day, Paul saw that for all their efforts, they had only cut a line around four feet long and a thumb's depth. Not a lot to show for their efforts. Paul walked away from the site extremely worried about the pyramid building program, as he had now seen for himself the difficulty in cutting super hard granite. But he also realised that no other material was strong enough to take the huge loads required and the project was fully reliant on these slabs being available on time. As he walked back to the quarry village, he saw a couple selling small stone statues at the side of the road. Paul stops and looks at the expertly carved trinkets and was astounded by the quality of the workmanship. Paul discovered that the vendors were called Keith and Lorraine and Keith was working in the quarry as a copper smelter. To earn extra money, they had started to carve the statues at night out of waste bits of granite and limestone rock. But how do you cut the granite so precisely? Keith explains that he was from a small village in the desert, and near his village, and according to tradition, the gods sent a star down to earth, which smashed into the sand, leaving a huge area of the desert covered in yellow gemstones. The desert tribes had no access to metal, so used this gift from the gods as super hard sharp blades for numerous tasks including cutting meat and skins, tips for their arrows, making jewellery and carving art into the stone landscape. Keith went on to explain that at the end of his shift he puts tiny fragments of the star gems crushed up and mixed with a small amount of corundum and quartz dust into leftover molten copper and pours himself small knives, drills, files and saws used to create his little figurines. He then pulls a small knife out of his bag and shows Paul how much easier it is to cut the granite with his special tools. Lorraine then shows Paul a small, highly polished limestone figurine of the great Farah Khufu. She explained, after Keith has smashed up the star gems into small fragments, the dust that remains makes a fantastic polishing paste, bringing limestone and granite to a high gloss finish. Paul asked why this wasn't currently being used to cut the blocks. Keith said he showed his supervisor his gem infused copper knife and the supervisor said, Shut up and get on with your job as you were told you backward desert rat. The next day, Paul, Keith, Lorraine and a small caravan of workers go out to Keith's village in the middle of the desert to come across millions of yellow crystal shards laying on top of the desert as far as the eye can see. They filled up as many bags as they could carry with glass-like gemstones and took them back to the Aswan quarries. The next day, Paul pulled a sharp desert gemstone fragment out of his bag and showed the quarry workforce how easily he could scratch and cut into the granite. He then oversaw the gems being crushed up and the small shards were mixed with the molten copper which was poured to make saws and core tubes 
for drilling holes. Paul then watched these new improved tools massively increase the cutting and drilling speed of the workers, requiring a lot less sharpening and repouring of the tools, saving a massive amount of time and timber for the fires, so releasing more workers for cutting and shaping duties. Paul also had bags of the fine grinding dust sent up to the Chura quarries to help polish the capping stones. Paul and Dan sat having a relaxing drink together, now both satisfied that with finding a usable material that is harder than granite made the quarrying and shaping of the granite blocks quicker and easier. I can't believe we spent so much time using soft copper tools, said Dan. That super hard Libyan glass has changed everything. Great work, my friend. Cheers. Paul can now return to the pyramid site with the knowledge that the build program can now be met.